So the question before the break. The question for the break was, what is a supertype? Yes, exactly. It means that it's a type of which the class that you're talking about is a subclass, and the superclass is the one above. And if you are paying attention in the RD course, then you will see that superclasses are typically drawn on top or above the class you're talking about, and that's true. But there's another thing. I didn't say sup it did say super type, not super class. Why this distinction, you think? So what we, what we talked about is something like looks like this. We have some type. Let's call the guy X, for want of a name. And what I heard is we have a super type. And the super type is typically drawn above the type you're talking about. And the relationship between them is this triangle you'll see in AAD and a drawn line. Yes. That's true. This relationship, this this specialization or a general relation, depending on the direction that you're talking about, is a topic in AED, means that this thing is also that one. So if, it, if well, let's call this one Y, then Y is a supertype of X, and X is also a Y. Yeah, that's important. That has to do with inheritance, with polymorphism, because once you have something of type Y, let's call the guy Y, then you can do something like new X. That's fully legal. Yeah? But I said super type, not super class. Why do I use super type? Yes. Could you speak up a bit because I do can't understand you. Well, yeah, that 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 is an additional information that you want want to give. What is what is the relationship with the between a supertype and a subtype, or a class and its supertype, or a class and its subtype? That is, one derives from the other. Uh, extends it. That's typically how you write it in Java. But super, super types and super class are not the same thing. Maybe I'll help you. There's another thing which is super, as in above this class X. And in Java, you can only do this relationship set, that is that as an extend, and this one, the other one, in a specific way. What is the allowed relationship between X and that other thing? This would be an interface. Let's call the thing I for interface. And what is the relationship that I'm allowed to draw between those two? Yes. Implements. Implements. Any way how you say that graphically? Yes. It's a dotted or a dashed line, yes. So the interface implies this means implements in Java. So the language implements, the language, the graphical language says implements, so you do not have to add that word because that's superfluous. And if you have too much information in your diagram, it makes it harder to read. So keep your diagrams clean. These Y and I, Y and I are both supertypes of X. Meaning that you can do something like I, I is Y. You might be able to do that. This might be wrong. All right. This has all to do, did you do static types in class? 
Did the other colleagues do that too? Yeah. Depends. <laughs> okay, so here's an issue. Here might be an issue. What is the type of Y as far as the Java compiler is concerned? As far as the static type is concerned, and that is what the compiler is all about, static types, the, the, the types at the time you compile stuff. What is the static type of that Y? That type is indeed a Y, so the compiler thinks it's that. Yeah? The I here is that thing, which is different, distinct, two different types as far as the compiler is concerned. So what will the compiler do in this case? It will say something about uh, along the line as in this Y, that is that Y, that type, cannot be assigned to I because it isn't an I. It's a Y. Stupid names I chose, but well, there you go. Yeah? What I could have done is, so make the code green, is say I have an X, call the guy X, it's typically what you do in Java, and then do the new thing uh, X. And now the compiler knows, oh, this X is of static type X, capital X. Yes? You might be able to. Yeah, but this is not yet about casting because once you start casting, you're telling the please to you're telling to the compiler, please, 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 I know this is okay. Try to avoid that because you want to have a strict compiler. Because the strict compiler is the first line of defense. When you set your compiler very strict, then everything, or most of the things that pass the compiler are okay. And if you have to cast, you might get into trouble. Then the compiler says, okay, you know better. And then it puts into into the class file and that gets into the jar file and then the, jar, the JVM runs around uh, at this code and it says, okay, there's a cast here, let's try this. Let's see if it's okay. And then you could have a runtime exception. And that's something what you want to avoid. Because your customer will say, when I do this, it does boom. And you want to avoid that. So avoid cast. But it could be done. So what I could do is write I, so forget this line, strike it out, I is X. Because this relationship, these two relationships define supertypes. Y and I are supertypes of X. So you can assign this uh, X to one of its supertypes because the same reason as you could do Y is a new X. Because X is both a Y and an I. No? Okay. So that is a, a small part of th theory. Um, maybe, maybe yeah. Add to it, is it because the, uh, the static type is only the declared type, right? So the variable and the declared, they're not talking about the type, that's the static type. And the dynamic type, that's the counterpart, that is the instance name. Uh, yeah. yeah. So in your example, what was it? Why was it changed in the beginning? Yeah, I can, no, I can do that. There's a, a bit of uh, keyboard magic, and then uh, uh, the, 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 the camera. That's it. And yeah. when you look at why is new X, then the, uh, so the declare type is Y, that's the static type, and then the dynamic type in this case is X. Yeah, yep. okay, thank you. Um, now, enough of talk. We're going to do test-driven. Test-driven design, test-driven development, whatever you want to call it, and you do the calls, meaning saying, uh, you can tell me what we will code in the remaining time of this class. That is almost half an hour, a bit more, a tad more, and you could start developing a small class. And uh, for, uh, in case you can't up come up with uh, another idea, we studied a bit and we came up with this. Uh, German class might have seen something similar. Think milking robot machine and barns and a farm and all this uh, shit, sorry, these things. 
Uh, well, cow shit is of course happening in barns as well, but uh, and that's what you could do. So you could uh, model this, and this already becomes quite a complex application. And I've been told that uh, there has been uh, a game of this type in uh, on your Nintendo Game Boy, in which you could uh, grow produce and put seeds in the ground, and you had to rake and to give water, and then your pop uh, flowers pop up, or your your corn or your potatoes or whatever you grow. Your watermelons might be in the, in the summer. Uh, that is something that you want to produce. Now, now, a business case that uh, might pop up is something along the line that is you're selling produce that you as a farmer grow. So you need to, uh, to, to find some kind of produce, like, uh, well, maybe call it produce, but don't make it too complex. We can, but because we will be able to improve our design while we go. We are making sure that everything we write, we implement, is tested, test driven, and then we all might see, hey, this is a cauliflower, and this is a watermelon, and this is a, a bunch of tomatoes, a kilo of tomatoes, and they have all similar properties. Similar in the sense that the business case, and in this case it might be business, is similar, as in Best uh, uh, best before date, for instance. If you buy a cauliflower, you should eat it within two, two weeks. It gets a bit squishy after one week, but you can still cook it because cooking will put in water back so that you can still eat it. But if it gets gray at the edges, then uh, take care. Then the mold might have taken over and th uh, thought this uh, cauliflower is a good snack. So something like a best before date might, might be something useful. Yeah? So, what we can do is try to, to come up with the requirements of such a business case. So, what would you do? Here, in front of the, the, the barn, or in the front of the farm, I should say, you have a, how do you call this? Markkraampje, uh, I don't know the stall. Yeah, a stall but might be the correct word, yes. A stall where you sell stuff, and you could come up with business rules yeah and just for in this case of course, just for the purpose of showing what test driven design does for you for instance if the best before date is tomorrow you sell it uh, for a reduced price that is what albert hein does 35 percent off if uh, the next day is best before yeah and um what you could also imagine that and that happens in the fridge in the in the shops that they put the, the oldest produce in the front like think of uh, packets of milk the oldest are in front because typically the customers that, that are in a hurry grab those and the customers that want fresh milk get one from behind yeah we could imagine that to be a use case a business case that we can turn into test driven and now I'm on dangerous ground because I'm now touching an area for something I never did. That is making up a story and you watching and me doing test driven and see where it breaks. It's not a problem for me. Well, it will be. I won't sleep tonight if it goes very bad, but that's okay. Um, but let's, let's see how it, uh, how it works. So we will simply start our... Uh, NetBeans IDE and see how far we can get. And uh, I need a special arrangement to make sure that everything is recorded. There we go. So we'll make a new project, a new project, and call it, what's your name? Name, please. Imagine a name. No, well, not simply call it farm, yeah? Oh, sorry. Uh, I Quake? No, well, Quake? Why not Quake? Uh, okay. Anyone? Who is, who is against Quake? There's only one. You lose. <laughs> uh, cancel. No, I'm looking. I want to start I want to start with an application that
that does something with farms. If we use Quake, nobody will remember what it is all about. It's silly and funny. But if we say farm, then this is, this is what the narrative started with. Yeah? And we simply developed just one class, and I hope we'll be able to do that. You'll also notice that I'm not making an application yet. No, instead I'm making a class library because I'm making classes as in parts, system under tests, thingies, or objects, or, no, sorry, I should say components, that will go into our application. And the other thing is, when you make a class library, you don't have a main thingy which you have to de decide upon what is the name of the main and I don't know what. So we'll make a Java class library. Yeah, and we call it, I'll put it on, the, on, on my desktop, it's a nice place because then we'll see it lying around tomorrow. We simply call it farm and then we say finish. Yes, there you go. We have no package, we knew that, there is no default package. There's also a library included, which is the default Java JDK, JDK 8, so that's not actually not very much going about. What's the next step I should do? Sergey. Yeah, I might do that, but uh, if I look at, uh, at this directory, I see that I already have a source package. So I, I rather I should say a source directory. First thing I would do is test driven is write a test class. Now, what to do will we call our test class? What is a test about? What are the requirements? Is the first thing you should sh shout. If, if so someone says to you, uh, start developing, you say, what is it about? And you'll say, cauliflower. Can I w someone spell cauliflower for me because I can't? Yeah, let's, let's have a look at that. <laughs> what I should do, what I should do is click, right click, right click on farm and then do new unit test. Yeah? I'll should give it a name and the name if you write a test, the convention is that your test classes end with capital T E S T test. So it would be Colli Flower C A U Well whatever. We can change it later on. That call is called refactoring. But uh, I also always want my classes in packages. What are packages? It's PRC one week, I think, seven. What is a package in Java? Yeah, package separate different classes. They are a way to organize your stuff. They have also different other things that we'll address in a different moment, and maybe it's already on this week's slide, but we'll also be talking about how can classes cooperate. And you can even have packages which have classes inside them, which no one else can see. Package private classes. So packages allow you to organize your code, but also allow you to protec protect your code, in particular the design of your code. And so I always want a package. And in this case, choosing a package name, naming is hard, but in this case it's simple. We simply call the package also farm. Just for the reason. And you notice that all these things are off because I want to write my own test and I want to start writing my test. Yes? Okay. So now I get a few things. First of all, you'll s you might have noticed that here some things have happened. That is, test libraries have been added by NetBeans, and also a new folder has been created, which is called test, and inside I have the package, and inside the package I have my cauliflower test. Yeah? And that's all. And what you also see, often see that this, uh, this, uh, tr uh, this stuff is being removed because actually it's uh, just taking, is a waste of space. And this constructor is typically also not required. I might want to change my templates, but it doesn't matter. Now, what is the first thing you do? 
whenever you write a piece of code, find out what we're going to test. Yes, exactly. And whenever you've written a test, what do you do? What's the first thing that you do once you've completed writing your test? Run it. Run it. Why? To see it fail, to see it read. Yes, exactly. Actually, the test doesn't fail, but the test says, you code kaput. Something similar. Yeah? So, watch it. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see my keys, the things that I type. I should turn it off when I type my passwords, but otherwise, this, this will be available. You can also see my mouse clicks, right, left, right, and, and so on. And also, you can program your NetBeans. You can program your NetBeans to do cool things. You can do that with IntelliJ, whatever thing, other, but NetBeans is very good at this too. So what I do, I program the beast to know that when I type J-U-T-M, as in Jutum, Dutch Jutum, op Jutum, Jutum, something like that, so U-I-T-M, in that order, and then at the top, I get a test method. And the nice thing about the test method is uh, that I also can type the name of the test method. It's a convention to start them with test, but it's not, not really necessary. But also you see that here I have a method name that's the same method name over there. So whenever I run this test and it fails, I see, I know, ah, that's this test. And it's very handy. And uh, I can tell you, I'll, I'll put it on the, on the website, how you can create such macros, because it's very, very cool. Um, OK, so I have my first test. Yeah. Now, I could run it. Is that a good idea? Yes. Yeah. Good. Running is not possible because it's a library. It's not a main, app, it's not an application, it doesn't have a main. So what I should do, I must think it, well, does this work? Well, no, no. What I typically do, because these, these things are remnants from the MOOC uh, thing ED plugin, maybe I should turn it off. But anyway, what you can do is right click on the test class and then choose test file or press control F6. Yeah, well, I typically do this simply to show it. So test, oh, no, wrong thing. That is what happens, that's what happens if you do a live show. Test file, and you see my test runs. My test is read, so it's a glorious test, but it's not very useful because it doesn't do any useful work. Why do I have this line in anyway? Why do I like to have this line at the end? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It, it gives you this message. And also, when I see this name, I know that any code before has completed it successfully. So if I write extra tests in front of this fail, I know that all these things have passed, have gone, have gone correctly, has be, have been accepted. Now. Best before, what do you do? You want to do a best before test. We want to make sure that we have cauliflowers in our market uh, stall and we, uh, they are somehow have the property field from which we can derive best before. How would you test that? Not how you implement it, but how would you test that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That could be. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you do? How? How can you, you can imagine 
the, um, this, fa this, this uh, farmer operating, yeah? So he puts, the, he puts a piece of plastic, oh, sorry, paper around the uh, cauliflower, and he puts a label on, on it, and on the label it says, best before. How does the guy or girl produce the label? How do you do that? And then if you have an idea, how would you test it? If I make a label now, what is it that I know for certain about this label? Other than it contains cauliflower, uh, farmer Janse, and some pictures, I don't know. It has, yes. It should contain a date, yes. Which is in the future. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Because if you have a fresh cauliflower, assuming that you pack them once they come from the field, you make your label and your label should specify a best before date in the future. Yeah? Let's do that. So, um, Actually, I'm already thinking about refactoring, but I shouldn't do that. I should first write, because we are not producing cauliflowers, of course. We are producing cauliflower labels, but then we get these longish names, and I can't type, so this will be very hard on me. So let's, let's simply assume that it's a cauliflower that we are producing. Yeah? So we make a new cauliflower. Cauliflower. Uh, let's call the guys the the cabbage C is now let's let's see what uh, what NetBeans can do for me no control uh, alt p no new it can't do any completion yet because what I would it to do is produce a new cauliflower. And well, it doesn't exist, so NetBeans has no clue. It is no ma not magic. It's a stupid computer program, and it has uh, certainly less imagination than I have. I have already produced two errors. And they are the same, actually, or uh, are equal. The spelling error. Can anyone point it out? Yes, very good. The F is the one that's wrong. Yeah, there was this F and that oh that F and let's have a look if I can do that like so no like so yes these F's should be sh lowercase F's yeah like so yeah so um, and now another thing is happening and I count this one this uh, light bulb with a red mark on it on line 15 also as a failing test, as a red test, which is okay. Who is doing the testing in this case? Yeah, almost. It looks like NetBeans does it. The compiler is the good answer. Yes, because NetBeans says, hey, this is Java code, can you do something for it, on it for me? And then the compiler says, okay, this is rubbish, because this is an object uh, declared and you do new and all this stuff doesn't exist. So make your light on and do red thing and... Okay, and, it's and the test and the compiler did the static testing. Compiler's role is not just turning code into machine code. Compiler's role is validating your code, looking if it's any good, syntax-wise, but all logically and so on and so forth. So, but uh, if you have a yellow bulb, then often enough NetBeans has an idea and uh, the idea is that it wants to create a cauliflower class and it has three choices. That is, you could make, choose the bottom one and this will make an inner class inside this test class. That's the worst of all. Yes, you could choose the top one, which is a cauliflower inside the test class uh, directory, so it would be in farm but in the test part, which is stupid because then you, as a farmer, would have to go to the test class to get your cauliflower. That's not a good idea either. So in this case, the middle one is the one that you should choose. And then NetBeans makes you a, a cauliflower in the package farm, and you're just fine. Yeah? So this is, I had a red, compiler complaint. Now we have a green, 
because, well, if I run my code, you see it runs until the best before time not yet implemented. It's actually saying if everything above is okay, so if you comment this last line, like so, then the, green, the test would be green. Yeah, green. Simple enough. I leave this line in always until, until I'm done with a full set of requirements. Oh, <laughs> my wrong. Now what's the next thing you do? So uh, construction, we have a constructor now. You produce a new cauliflower label. What's the next thing? Sergey, or, yeah, Sergey. <laughs> Too late, yes, you. You would get, give the cauliflower a best before date. Yeah, okay. And how do I do that? How do I make sure that this cauliflower has a best before date? Yes. Do you remember what the three letters were on this class, on our um, thingy, what we're doing here? Test driven. So what should I do? First, make a test, and what should the test do? Ask if the cauliflower has a best before date. I simply invoke the best before date, or get best before date. But maybe best before date is the best word we can come up with. It could be get something. But typically the word get is used to get the content of a field. If I compute a value from the content of a field or something else, like in best before date, it might have been computed. Yeah? So, yes? Yeah, no, well, let's do that. Yeah? What is the type of this best before date? It's date. In Java, since Java 8, we use a different type. We use local date. The reason for that is a lot of talk. You can read it up, but always prefer local date because it has very, very nice features and is also for much way more robust than the date class. Date class is actually, well, something that you would be sorry for if you had to had, had written it so local local date best before equals cauliflower dot best before okay now again we have a red who is do doing the red the c Ah, there are a few things here. Yeah, I should maybe first do do the import because local date is a thing that I haven't yet specified as is I'm going to use it. So I add a the import statement in front of the class in, at the beginning of the class. And then what's the next reason? Well, simply point to the bulb. Uh, and if I can do that, oh yeah, it says cannot find out find symbol symbol best method dot best before and it's not available on the variable c of the type cauliflower so what should i do well click the goddamn bulb yeah so create a method yeah so i didn't do any typing and i can't type that's the reason why i like uh, test run even more and then what does it say let's you, s you see, if you, if you pay attention, you see that this one got bold. It means that this class has, has changed, but not has been, ha hasn't been shaved, saved yet. If I press uh, uh, save or press this, this uh, thingy over here, save all, then the compiler said, oh, okay, I like it. Yeah? So, again, I wrote a line of code. I uh, had a compiler said, uh uh and then you press the yellow bulb, and the compiler said, oh. And then 
you go back to the, you can look at the cauliflower. This is what uh, NetBeans did, not the compiler, but NetBeans did this. But now you should run our test again. So, and uh, once you've run, run a test before, then you typically press this button. And now you have an error. And you might have noticed that before this thing had a yellow tint in it. It said the test was runnable, uh, but it failed. That is, it, it tested something that was not true. Or they tested for equality and that was not true. Yeah? So, but in this case, when you invoke the method, it throws an exception. Yeah? It says, hey, don't call me. I'm not implemented yet. So what do you need to do? It hasn't been implemented yet. Yes? You should implement the method. Thank you, Gwyn. That's wonderful. So how do I do that? What is the simplest implementation that you can come up with? What is local date? What kind of type? We talked types uh, before break. Is it the primitive type? Is it the reference type? Is it the uh, enum? Is it something else? An interface? You tell me. A it's a reference type. Yes, local date is a reference type. And what can I do? Is the simplest way to return a reference. How can I implement that? Yes. There you go. Yeah. Being as lazy as bones, lazy bones, return a null. Why do I do this stupid thing? Yeah. Well, now I have an implementation which says, well, uh, it says the test method is not implemented, so let's make it just make it green. This this now it says, well, you were able to invoke the method, yeah, uh, but you don't do anything with the return value, yeah. You re invoke the method and you got something back. You said, okay, it worked, method uh, completed successfully, and it's fine. What's the next thing I should do? Improve your test. How? Check that it is not null. So, oops, assert, oh, oh, now you know how we make our exams. <laughs> assert, not, no, oh, BB, yeah, the best before should not be null. Yeah? Okay, there's this one other simple test. So let's run the test. And it says test best before. But now you have no clue why this test failed. Yeah? It only says test before failed, unit fail assertion failed error. Oh. I want proper messages. That is, BB should, oh, should not be null or nil, whichever way you want to. And now if I rerun the test, you see that the test message says, hey, this is broken. I know what's wrong. Yeah? That's why you always specify, you always specify a message. Next. Now we know the thing is not null, what can we do? We now know that local date is indeed an instance of, that, sorry, BB is an indeed an instance of local date. It is not null. It also implies that we can call a method on the thing. Yeah? Well, how can you do that? Uh, let's have a look. Because if you have a strongly typed language like Java, .NET, or whatever, you can do things like that, like this, do completion on them. Yeah? And you can do all kinds of things, and you can see, for instance, if the date is in the future, is after. You can simply ask if the date is after something. Yeah? And then you, you, you see something strange, because here you see that is after takes as a parameter a chronological, a chronolog local date. And that is a lot of 
text for a simple concept. It's an interface. Chrono lo local date is a super type of local date. Yeah? So what you put in in this method is something that is a super uh, something that is uh, well type-wise in the same range as local date. And of course you should put in something useful. Yes. Yeah, you do. But I'm testing the BB method, yeah, the, the, the best before method. I'm not testing the implementation. I'm not making an implementation. I'm just testing this very use case, what I heard, which is best before should be in the future. It's simpler. Test, writing test code is simpler. You only have to th uh, think a bit harder, but you only need to specify a few letters. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. And if you want to add some spaces, which I typically do, then you need seven, uh, eight, seven. You want to know that this date is after now, because future says after now. Yeah? So. You write your test, that is, you implement your test, is, uh, is after. So simply read the documentation, see, hey, ah, this, this is the one. That makes you, A, lazy, and B, smart, and write less code, and that, can't, that, that what you didn't write is never broken. Nothing is perfect. Okay, so BB is after, and of course not against itself, but local local date now it's important and you can do nice things with local date like now and you see i needed a bit more characters because i've added uh, local date dot now but uh, to sh prove my point i do this and of course this is this is actually cheating but uh, well i'm a teacher so i'm allowed to do that uh, and i can simply do something like this oops if I only could type, I can do it like this. And everyone can read this test. Best before is after now. If you pack your cauliflower, then the best before date should be in the future. Yeah? I haven't touched the code yet. I didn't think of the implementation yet. But of course, you can write the test Sorry, you can write an implementation that will pass this test. And uh, as cauliflowers go, best before is a week or maybe two weeks in the future. Yeah? Something like that. And uh, strawberries, uh, the, uh, strawberries, uh, I think four days. And uh, raspberries, two days, something like that. I don't know. You typically freeze raspber uh, raspberries because otherwise you can't sell them anymore. Yeah? So that's it for today. Um, See you again next week for a lesson, and see you in practical hours. Um, oh, oh, let me first turn off this uh, recording so that I...